There we go. I love that color. It matches your eyes. <laughs> Purple eyeshadow. Lesson, sweetie. Uh-oh, this is religious. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. Do it tonight before... <laughs> Do it tonight before you rust. <laughs> Happy anniversary again, March and Marm. Yeah, what you, how many presents did you give? Six? She breaks them regularly. Oh, okay. Oh, I need some. <laughs> Where'd you get that? Are they on sale right now? No. Okay. <laughs> What if you don't have any next time I come? You'll come over. There won't be any left by the time you come over. Okay, what do we have to? No, I think there's more. Oh, these are your That's it. We have all the others. Okay. These are special. I don't think we need cards for these, right? Well, I actually have them. Do you have it? But this is for. Steve. Oh. Oh, it's magnificent. Wow. Just in time, I That is magnificent. Absolutely magnificent. Here, put it back in the box. Yeah, put the other one in the box. Put it on. Steve. You put it on. Okay. You don't even have to wind it. It's. If it's right. <laughs> Put it in Doesn't that feel nice? Yes. Yeah, the Cadillac is next. The Mercedes comes next week. <laughs> Just a gigolo, anyway, right? No. <laughs> okay. You know what, Steve? Why don't you take that around and let everybody take a picture, take a look at that for a minute? Oh, you want to show it to them that way? I've never seen a nose ring that looks like no. That really wow. You help them with that. Yeah. <laughs> Go to the best counter. <laughs> just, just, just Yeah, they just push the little thing next to it. Can you do? <laughs> Is Leslie our jewelry major? Is that okay? Yes, okay. I want you all to watch now as Leslie does this. No, no, that's all right. It should just push right through. Just picture me getting this on in the morning, right? Oh, there's a safety ledge. Okay. Oh. Okay. 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 And it's all on, and it's big. Thank you, a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, one more time. Let's hear it for them, please. Fran and Don. Okay. Now we got to, let's, yeah, okay, we'll move all this stuff up to the side. Let's dance a little bit. we still got a little time. Thank you. Do you want to say anything? No, you don't want to say anything else. That's it. We're just going to have some fun now. Did I tell you? I can't. All right. Maintenance to keep our plants running. But to avoid power shortages, we may need your help. Many customers have already agreed to voluntarily cut back their power use on critical days. When you hear a power alert message, please cooperate by cutting back on electricity. Thanks.
nation's business running like clockwork, just one airline offers hourly service to Chicago from both LaGuardia and Newark every business day. United, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve, hourly. Come fly the friendly skies. Where do you get a good pastrami? Tomorrow at 4.30. President Bush marks the past and talks about the future this morning in Poland. Wildfires roar through the American West, forcing hundreds from their homes. And the head of the NAACP condemns the Supreme Court. This is the CBS Morning News. Good morning, everybody. I'm Charles Osgood. Faith Daniels will join us later on CBS This Morning. I'm Bill Plant, and this is Monday, July 10th. This morning, President Bush making the rounds on his first full day in Poland. The president has paid homage to Poland's war dead and met with the Communist Party leader. His next major event is an address to Parliament. Wyatt Andrews joins us now from the Tomb of the Unknowns in Warsaw. Good morning, Wyatt. Good morning, Charles. The president, in a couple of hours from now, will outline his economic plan for Poland, but we already know that there won't be any dramatic announcement here, certainly no dramatic bailout for the Polish economy. Uh, and certainly not the $10 billion that Poland has said that it needs. What has happened financially already today is Secretary of State James Baker signed a debt restructuring agreement with Poland, but that's only for the $2 billion or so that Poland owes the United States. Poland's overall foreign debt is more like $40 billion. It's clear so far that the president's trip is designed to make a political statement much more than it's designed as any financial uh, mission of mercy. He has said he is not trying to imitate Mikhail Gorbachev's trips to the West, and yet it's clear he is trying to reach as many East Europeans as possible with the message to look West. As he waded into a crowd in Warsaw, the crowd sang 100 years, long live Poland. It's a song of salute and greeting here. Today he also played to the intense nationalism of Poland, laying a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier and laying another at the monument to the 300,000 Polish Jews driven from this city by the Nazis. Good morning, sir. Along the way, he has scheduled meetings with leaders across the now expanding political spectrum in Poland. First, General Jaruzelski, the man who presided over both martial law and the current wave of reform. Later today, the president will host lunch for both government and opposition leaders and will speak to the new Polish parliament. It's in that speech to Parliament the President will outline his plan, economic plan, that is, for Poland. The President is expected to outline a broad package in which he basically uh, asks for or offers to trade with Poland greater access to Western financial markets in exchange for democratic reform here in Poland. Charles? Quite well, as you said, the Poles certainly made it clear that they would have appreciated some substantial economic aid. Uh, why didn't the President bring money? <laughs> Uh, Charles, the president is trying very hard not to be judged on the amount of money that he does bring to Poland. Uh, again, as we pointed out in that piece, he, he is trying to be judged on the politics of bringing uh, his message to Gorbachev's front doorstep. Two reasons that he does not bring a big pot of money, at least according to the White House. First, this uh, particular White House feels burned by the fact that the United States gave Poland a great deal of money back in the 1970s, only to have Poland revert back into some repression. The second uh, thing that the president has said is that the United States is not in a great position to, uh, because it's a debtor nation, to bring a great deal of money to Poland. Thank you, Wyatt. Wyatt Andrews in Warsaw. Also covering the president there is our Harry Smith. He talked to Secretary of State James Berker, Baker earlier this morning. And Harry joins us now in Warsaw's old town. Good morning, Harry. Good morning, Charlie. Uh, Mr. Baker is uh, here in Warsaw as well. He's back from his trip to the, uh, to the Middle East. And we talked to with him a little bit earlier this morning about uh, uh, the United States' aims and objectives in Poland and Hungary. This is really not a trip to uh, bestow economic largesse. It's a trip primarily to uh, support what is, in effect, a homegrown process of reform. And it is very uh, uh, fundamental reform, we think, uh, certainly very uh, important reform. We think this, is a, this really is a historic time for of these two countries of Eastern Europe. So it seems the Secretary and the President are trying to emphasize uh, the symbolic 
importance of the visit here more than the uh, notion of uh, handing out money. They have uh, said over and over again that there will be no blank check despite Poland's $40 billion uh, national debt and a claim from solidarity that unless this country gets $10 billion in economic aid, that all of the democratic reforms that have taken place here in the last few months will be for naught. Charlie? All right, did Secretary Baker touch any other major bases in his conversation with you? Really not. We, we, uh, money seems to be what's on everyone's mind here in Poland and in Hungary as well. Of course, Hungary doesn't have the extreme economic problems that Poland does. And I think what they're just trying to do is walk that fine line here in Poland and in Hungary of reinforcing the uh, changes that have already taken place without trying to uh, upset the balance of power such as it is. Thank you, Harry. Harry Smith in Warsaw's old town. Bill? Israeli Finance Minister Shimon Peres urged his Labor Party today to quit the coalition government because of the rival Likud Party's hard line on Palestinian elections. Such a move could bring down the government and force new elections. Meantime, funerals for the 14 Israelis killed in last Thursday's bus crash triggered revenge attacks on Arabs. Riot police arrested several Jews who were stoning Arab cars, and Israeli television showed the first pictures of the Palestinian accused of causing the bus crash. China's Communist Party newspaper says leaders are conducting a public house cleaning of corrupt party officials and have already expelled hundreds of members. One local official has been sentenced to death for selling bootleg liquor with phony name brands. The crackdown is seen as an attempt by the party to clean up its image following the violent crackdown on democracy protesters. NAACP President Benjamin Hooks says today's Supreme Court justices are worse than the segregationists of the 60s. As delegates to the Civil Rights Group's annual convention gathered in Detroit, Hook said today's Supreme Court is dangerous to the legitimate hopes of black people. It was this Supreme Court 